Hi, welcome to my studio. I'm Judith Lodge and the work that you are about to see range from being uh, sourced from nature, from dreams, from journals that I've kept over the years and I think a large part from my experience uh, in nature. Most specifically, a friend of mine is a part owner of an island off the coast of Vancouver and I have been tramping around that island for about 30 years photographing, painting, drawing, doing some writing and sometimes the most wonderful circumstances are when you're removed from the very place that is the source and are in uh, an incredible uh, setting like New York City, which is like the yin and the yang. So although most of these pieces come from uh, ideas and notions of water and landscape and whales and trees that are a hundred years old and beaches with the tide coming in and coming out, the juxtaposition in a, in a place like Long Island City, where I commute to from the East Village every day. Um, I've been here in New York City for the past 30 some years. I thought I was going to be here for a year or two and lo and behold, it's a very difficult place to leave. What I would like to introduce you to is some of the background for several of the series that you're going to have a chance to look at today. I'm working with acrylic paint and I'm pushing it as far as I possibly can. And I'm also uh, involved with photography. And I find that over time, and it has been a long time, uh, the two begin to play off each other so that the nature sources from photography begin to inform in a major way the uh, work on paper and canvas. The building out, the surfaces got thicker, the colors became more translucent and transparent. So where I come from and where I'm going to involves how work simply stacks up over time and what emerges is an intersecting literal pathway around things that are actual and real and metaphorical. The work itself is involved with the notion of beauty and in that notion is not a fixed notion but it is has a very important place in my work because it is beauty tinged with terror and decomposition and that is what resonates for me. The uh, professional activities that have been that I've been involved with include New York, Minnesota, Vancouver, and the mountains of Banff, Alberta. There have been large and small art departments which inevitably produced students with ideas and responses that made me reflect on my own work. Faculty, colleagues, and students have been a wonderful family. I grew up as a Midwesterner in St. Paul, Minnesota, earning a bachelor degree of science at McAllister and an MFA at Cranbrook in painting in Michigan. And I have spent a lifetime being both an artist, a student, and a teacher. There have been endless opportunities to question and wonder about this world of, of making images and talking about, looking at, and it's been a privilege. Uh, this city is the total flip side of the place that I have spent 30 years also working with the tide pools and the embankments on a small island in the Pacific Northwest. And both places have very 
very much brought me to where I am today. The mandalas, which appeared sort of out of nowhere during a period of time where I had a very small space and not the usual 6,000 square feet of studio. And I had a place where I could work beside my bed and also in the office at Parsons on the weekend. And during a period of about five years before I knew I had cancer, these images began to coalesce and appear. And I think sometimes your intuition knows more about what's going on than your conscious self. And I think that has been a very important revealing factor about where work comes from and how you live with it. Over time, I have developed a great respect for that combination of dreams where the unconscious is bringing things to your attention and what you have no real conscious plan for. You can say, okay, now over the next six months, I've set aside material and time to develop this idea. And out of that comes the most surprising responses. And I think everybody who is involved in this for a committed period of time has absolutely been surprised by the voice that consistently reappears. And I, I stand in awe of the process. During the period of time that I lived in Vancouver, which was approximately 10 years, I was able to do a lot of work, had exhibitions, several uh, uh, small exhibitions in, in the local gallery scene, also um, at the Victoria Art Museum with Willard Holmes and his early gallery that he had set up, uh, the Pender Street Gallery. Uh, the major exhibitions during that period of time for me were what set me up for getting ready for New York City. In New York, it's a very difficult place to have the same kind of attention as one may get in a place like Vancouver. So for me, it was a period of time spending as much energy as I could into the studio and doing teaching. And pretty much that is where I'm at right now, where I am able to pull together the drawings, the photographs, the paintings, large and small scale, and really um, taking a very close look at what has been my memory and subject matter and how that is reflected in the real objects that I'm referring to, the water, the uh, embankments, the uh, stone, the shells, the, the bones. All of those things begin to echo some real intangible things that we know about life and death. And the subject matter is a kind of reflection on the outward invisible which emanates the inward and spiritual. And that is like a small prayer to the universe. The Titles of the various exhibitions and series go like this, and it tells a lot about what the content and the subject matter is. The Catamaran series uh, is work that is coming out of the last year, and the Catamaran has to do with, uh, in this case, there are three separate paintings that come together and read as one. They're called Bone Boat, 
open boat, and lifeboat. There's another series that has 12 images connected to it. That's called Alpha to Omega. And the, there's a series of photographs, which I entitled Trees Hit by Lightning and Other Fires. And that series, Trees Hit by Lightning, are a series of photographs that I'm beginning to put together right now. And what was really important for me on the island is after I had finished my chemo and I had had several major surgeries, I was drawn to the trees that had been hit by lightning but were still alive. And so there is a, uh, a group of about 10 or 15 images that I have put together that show these very charred arbutus trees that are still growing and are hanging in there and I felt uh, a great kinship with those trees and I know where each and every one of them are on this island. Uh, some of the earlier exhibitions from Canada were called shields, life jackets, mandalas, and basically what happens is that the sound and the smell and the feel of being in these natural places are revisited as best I can here in the studio so many thousands of miles away and there's a sharpening of intensity because I think of that distance which which is uh, uh, one way to fuel the work things that are important and that's it.